So in our live stream from last week, we actually had a lot of questions about people getting the stated range for their Tesla, whether it be a Model S, X, or Model 3. So we're actually gonna go over that today because I'm seeing a lot of misinformation spread. So a lot of people are saying they don't get anywhere close to stated range. Other people are saying they have no problem getting, getting that. that or better. Yeah, it, or better. So we're going to kind of go over what to do to get the most range out of your car. Keep in mind, though, gasoline cars suffer from range loss also. Uh, a lot of this kind of goes for both gasoline and EVs. Yeah, so you're still losing some efficiency in colder temperatures, even with gasoline cars. Yeah, so first thing is going to be time your charge. So here in Colorado, it's wintertime it's cold. So the way we actually do it is if we would charge when we get home, the battery would sit and be cold by the time we leave the next morning. We try to time it so that our battery is just finishing charging when we leave for work in the morning because a warmer battery is a happier battery. And also on part of that, when our car is plugged in in the morning, if you want to precondition the car, you can do that while it's still plugged in. Exactly. So it pulls that power straight from the grid instead of having to use battery power, which would then lower your range during your drive. And so once your battery is warmed up, it means you'll have full regen and everything. Regen just means you're going to get that much more energy back into your battery when you stop and stuff like that. Definitely, that is probably the biggest thing for colder climates. Yeah, so that, again, for those of you who don't know reg what regen is, is if you take your foot off the accelerator, then the motors go in reverse and then put mm -hmm. their energy back into the battery. And if you have hills on your route or if you're, even when you're just coming to a stop on a stop sign. So another big impact to your range could potentially be your driving style. If you're punching it at every stoplight and driving really more aggressively, you're going to not end up with as high of a range as you should because you're using a lot more power. Yeah, typically I only use my accelerator when I'm just starting up from a stop, you know, right. and on some side streets. Once I get on the highway, I am on tack, you know, using the cruise control and it maintains that distance. And I do yeah. try to keep, a, 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 I usually have mine to set to three, maybe four in the winter if there's snow or ice, yeah. maybe even further on the highway if I'm on a road trip. But by having a longer distance, then your car has more time to speed up or slow down and it's less aggressive. And so it uses less, less energy, yeah, less power. And kind of related to that is speed has a great effect on range. Yeah. So if you're going 80, 90 miles an hour, that's going to use a lot more energy than if you're going, say, 70 miles an hour. Yes, it will take more time, but it will use a lot fewer watt hours per mile. And so when I'm on road trips and everything, I normally go like five, sometimes 10 over the limit. Don't sue me. And I've never really had a problem, but I have had people fly by me and I'm going like 80 and they're probably going 100 plus, you're gonna use a lot more power once you hit those speeds. And if you do think that you're gonna be a little bit more heavy or lead footed, you can actually put your car into what's called chill mode, which means you can press that accelerator down all you want, but it's gonna limit your throttle, which will in turn help you be a little bit more energy efficient. Also, it's a good idea to make sure that your regenerative braking is listed as standard, Low isn't bad for like icy conditions where there could be potential slippage issues, but standard is really what you should be in pretty much any other time. Another big influence in your range is going to be tires, whether it be pressure or size. So I'm gonna talk about Model 3 specifically, but it actually goes around for all Model S, X, and 3. Uh, if you are using 18 inch wheels on the Model 3, you're gonna get a better range. Once you get into those bigger wheel sizes, your tires are wider, there's just that much potential friction you can have with the roadway, which means you're not gonna get as good of a range. Also though, is your tire size and weight. So bigger rims and everything, gonna weigh more, add unsprung weight, and actually hurt your range. Now with the arrows that Tesla has, those do add a little bit more, they're a little more efficient, less yeah. wind resistance, but there are tires from other manufacturers which can have larger diameters, you know, yeah. 19, 20 inches, that can actually be lighter yeah. than Tesla's stock 18 inch tires. So the size- it's, it's a balance. You have to see the size, the unsprung weight, you know, it, it's all- The width. A, there's all kinds of factors in there that can affect it. But mm -hmm. and, uh, even the tread can yeah, affect- Yeah, the tread and your tire pressure. Now on this all wheel drive Model 3, it actually says in the door jam to fill the tires to 42 PSI. Now, if you're trying to do something like hypermiling or get like the best range possible, you want to make sure you're hitting that 42. Or even a little bit higher. A little bit higher. Yeah. 45, 46, probably is not going to hurt anything. Now, if you're getting like 48, 50, 
Yeah, it might be it a little... It can accelerate tread wear. Yeah, it might be a little degree. rougher. You might yeah. feel the bounce a little more, but that will definitely help decrease your energy usage. Yeah, but if you're rocking like 35, that means your tire is going to sag a little bit and you're going to have more contact with the roadway, which is going to slow you down a little bit and make you use more energy. So here you can see I actually have my PSI on the higher side of things. They are supposed to be at 42. I run a little bit more just to help with the fuel efficiency, just a little bit. So a big question I've been asked a lot is why doesn't Tesla include a full size spare in their cars? Well, most of the time you never need any of that. And Tesla has some pretty excellent road size service should you pop a tire or anything. But carrying around that tire is basically carrying around weight that isn't needed. That is another big impact. And so they left out the spare tire, but you can leave out other things too. I know some people drive around with their car full of junk, yeah. stuff that they never use or exactly. very rarely use. It's like, if you don't need it, don't drive around with it. I mean, no. it doesn't make any sense to carry all that extra weight around. And kind of going with that too, like in Colorado, you see a lot of people have ski racks and they leave them on year round and you don't, yeah. you know, th that's fine if it's in the winter and you're going to go skiing or if you have a bike rack and you want to take your bike out. And I can see people maybe using that year round, but if I don't see like, some people have like the roof rack uh, ski container on year round and yeah. that is a huge sag on, on you know a huge it factor it kills that, your efficiency yeah also big contributors to loss of range are going to be using your heat and ac now we're not telling you don't ever use them because you certainly can i do all the time but be smart about it say in the morning preheat your car when you're still plugged in so it uses the energy from your grid rather than using your battery. Also consider using the seat heaters because they use way less energy yeah. than the actual car heater, which heats up the entire cabin. If you're driving by yourself, do you really need the entire car all heated up to 72 degrees yeah. when you could just use your seat heater and just heat it up for the driver? And if you do live in a really hot climate, definitely consider tinting your windows with a ceramic tint. Now you don't have to do a super dark tint to get the properties of ceramic tint that are beneficial. Ceramic tint, will reject the heat. And you can do a really light tint on all your windows, your front windshield, depending on if it's legal in your state. You could even redo these tops, even though they already have some really good uh, heat shielding properties in them. But rejecting that heat will help your cabin stay cooler. So maybe instead of having to use AC all the time, you can just turn on the, the fan for like recirculate. So those are some of the things that we actually take into account. And across owning 10 Teslas, I've always gotten really good mileage when I'm like not at a racetrack, obviously. That car doesn't have great watt hours per mile, but it's meant for the track. But when I'm on road trips and everything, I can have no problem hitting the 310 or so miles in this Model 3. Now, when I'm on a road trip, I actually try not to fully charge because that extra 10, 20% can take a little while to get to. So I tend to keep it at a little bit lower percentage, but we really have had zero issue in lifetime watt hours per mile on the Model S of what, 40,000 miles? So yeah, on the Model S 100D that we have, it's over 41,000 miles and it has a lifetime average of only 314 watt hours per mile, which is way below the estimate of like 330 watt hours per mile. And we just went and ran some errands, stopped at a few stores, we didn't really do much in terms of planning. We used a little bit of AC because it's a little bit warmer out with the sun, but at over 91 miles, we averaged 280 watt hours per mile and that's round trip. Yeah, and that was with no planning. I didn't even try. Yeah. We, it's just, we get good watt hours per mile just because of my driving style, but also yeah. it's a little warmer out today. The weather's a little better. Some days on my way to work, I've gotten as low as 150 watt hours Same. per mile on a 17 mile commute. And that's when we're, the traffic is maybe a little bit slower at like 45 miles an hour because there's some construction. Yeah. So if you're at the right speed, you can go, I'll, a lot further on that same charge. So again, we are in Colorado, we're at a higher elevation, so the air is a little thinner up here, so that might be helping us get Maybe. better values than some of these other people down at sea level. But when I do a lot of road trips out to Kansas or Nebraska, when I'm heading east, it's a little bit downhill, but also I usually have a tailwind, and that really helps me get good numbers, even going 70, 75, 80 miles an hour. Then again, coming west, coming back into Colorado, we're going uphill, and we have a headwind, then the numbers might not be so great, but lifetime averages, we're, it still, averages out. we're still doing quite well. Because I, I I think I misspoke the, on the video the other night and said that the model, the S90D, had like a, an average of 290. I remember now it's 303. So a oh. little bit less than the 314, but the model, the S90D 
weighs a lot less than the, the S100D. So it's still pretty good values. It's still way below the estimated the range, EPA range. Yeah, so I don't know, comment down below, what tips and tricks do you guys have to be able to maximize the range out of your car? Uh, I know Tesla once had a range mode, unfortunately don't have it anymore. They still have I it think... in the S and the X. You can go into driving and select range mode if you really need the extra range. And basically range mode will save energy by reducing climate control power. It will also distribute torque between the motors to improve range. Heating or cooling the cabin may be less effective. So Model 3s just don't have range mode. Maybe it's always in range mode. Maybe. Or yeah, I don't know what the, I don't know. Um, but yeah, let us know down in the comments what you guys do to make sure that you can maximize your range. Always curious to know what other people do. As always though, huge thanks to our channel sponsor, Abstract Ocean. If you are looking to accessorize a Model SX or Model 3, much like this one, definitely check them all out, linked down below in the video description. And using code Tesla Inventory, all one word, will get you 15% off your first purchase. Two must-haves are definitely gonna be a center console wrap, just to help protect that piano black material that Tesla uses, because it can scratch and get fingerprints very easily as well as a matte screen protector, really helps cut down any glare from the sun and protect from any fingerprints, which we know screens are absolute magnets for. As always, though, thumbs up if you enjoyed that video, go and click here to subscribe here for some other ones, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.